Hey, Kev, for you, I can kick some audio in, bro. I'm watching Crystal's iPad. Uh, yeah, I saw those mounts, man. There's been like a little, kind of like a small war on that. So that's why I'm trying to like do this to show that session mounts are not that hard to make. Literally nice and smooth for you, man. Hope you enjoy them. Sorry I couldn't do it in red. I know that's your color, brother. But when you try to come up in this game and try to like sell your prints and make money, man, you know it's not about that. So you know how I roll. Take care of my brothers, man. Sorry it took so long. And these ones bold on too, bro. Not zip tie. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoy. Just want to show you guys some print night done it in a while. So thanks for watching. Whoever's watching here, I'm going to have here. Look back on my iPad.
All right, Chuck, I'll say something for you. <laughs> At least give us some titles. Huh? The what? <gasps> oh, titties. I've seen titles. Can't get my titty done. You want to see my dick? <laughs> Howdy, everyone. Crystal's out in the other room with her iPads. I don't have chat popped up here, so. Thank you to everyone stopping in and checking this out. These are for Kev FPV. <coughs> This is my printer, um, MD95 PSI. It is the ANIT A8. Um, I also build drones, print, do 3D printing, and all that good stuff. I got into this when I uh, got into drones, more or less. Just the fact of being able to do this and print different things and different frames and pretty much printed. Um, haven't printed no race frames and really put them to the torture test yet, but. I printed little toy grade frames and for them. Oh, these, these, what's up, brother? <laughs> well, he walks around showing people these nuts. <laughs> no, um, Metro. So, are you the one? Your name's Bill, correct? I was calling, uh, Oh, shit. Wiccan. I was calling Wiccan Bill. Hey, Wiccan. Crystal said you're here. Cool. Yes, Bill. Okay, Metro Bill. Okay, see, guys, I wasn't crazy last night. Um, No, it's not hard at all, Metro, to be honest with you. i got about 150 bucks tied up in it. It's an A-N-E-T. A -A 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 -E A8. Uh, it's a clone of a Prusa I3. You do it just like you do your um cards. Wiccan wants to know what you're printing. Oh, Wiccan. I'm printing a GoPro session mount. This is for Kev FPV. They are for a Martian 2, but they will fit multiple platforms <laughs> because a lot of them have that same space there. Uh, I've even taken them and just mounted the two holes here and zip tied across the back here on different frames where they wouldn't fit because some frames they just don't have it out yet and um, I do have a program but I haven't started doing my own prints yet so I do Thingiverse I want to thank um, Thingiverse.com for the awesome website that they have and uh, the people that post on there now I will remind you that when you grab prints off of there you do have to tune them <laughs> you know um, because it doesn't always set on the bed proper and you know your settings and all that but no it's just like putting your SD card into your computer and copying footage that's basically what you do do a slicing program I use Cura and then I put the SD card in here I load the file and you know optimal settings for TPU of course and then you got PLA you have PETG multiple different filaments that you can print with and the reason this is good because this is collapsible so it kind of gives you a soft mount Tight setup instead of like, uh, let me grab a hard mount. I'll show you. Ryan B's nuts said, Bring me some. Wiccan said, Do you sell 3D stuff? Can we buy from you, Chris? And Chuck wants to know if you want to come on the gangbang tonight. Keep you in the Um, yes, uh, to answer your question, yes, you can buy TPU mounts for me. Mm. I do have them for pretty much 
any frame out there and uh, also do a lot, you can go to thingiverse.com. Thingy. T H I N G I verse B E R S E dot com. Go over there, check out what you like. If you're into, like, I can do the frames and whatnot. Uh, pretty much anything. TPU. This is a this is a PLA mount. Okay, this is hard, so you can't collapse it. So there's certain things that you have, and this is what Kev has now. So um, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade Kev to these softer mounts, which it, this is okay. But then you see putting your GoPro in there and all, you could, you know, scratch it up. And this is kind of when I first started printing, so. I just kind of built my own printer. Kind of went from there. Um, this is a good platform to learn off of. Uh, a lot of people will say a lot of bad things about the A&A, &A, but I have been printing for it's been a while uh, doing it, and it's fun. I've printed many things. Like uh, anything, pretty much with the drones. Like I said, not just drones. You can pick stuff around your house. You break a doorknob on a handle, or on a door door handle, you literally replace it. Do anything, pretty much. I think in the RC hobby, it's a must. Honestly, it, you know, if you have the knack to get down with it, and a lot of people, and this is why I'm gonna do this, and I'm I hate to have to be this way, but uh, we had someone step up and they get a printer and they started like kind of thinking they're just going to go out there and sell a lot of prints and make a lot of money. And that's not what it's about. Us FPV people, we're cheap asses. So we like the barter trade. And so my whole point is that I've printed so much on here and pretty much given it away to show people in the beginning that, you know, I'm capable of doing this and here's what I need to do. Just take it, run it, see what happens. And I still have stuff out there today that's in PLA and people smashed in the ground. It's still 100% work. So the TPU is just a better, I think, filament for doing stuff like this. Um, like, uh, you know, different people, I say they grab different things and you'll see them print them with like, for instance, uh, no, no bolt mounts here. They want you to zip tie it to your thing. Well, me, myself, you can see how that, that moves in and out of there, right? So I still put a zip strap through here you know just a strap like we use for our batteries just to secure it so it doesn't fall and shake out but no it doesn't have like vibration they're pretty much because they're rubber they don't pick up much vibration at all i mean if you have it real loose you will pick vibrations up i've had them to where they've wobbled a little bit on the frame and other than that no point um they have multiple like that platforms multiple color filaments out there right now i'm pretty much down to blue I uh, have a touch bit of red left, not much. But I'll be willing to do any color if, if you're willing to uh, purchase some prints and whatnot. And I definitely would get the color and, you know, committing to making them. Yes, Bob the Biker. I printed Bob the Biker a frame, uh, a Keon 230 frame. Um, I have a one here I've done with a Sky Viper. Um, just took a Sky Viper stunt drone and printed the Punisher frame. And uh, I bashed this thing in the ground and everything. Um, love my drones in here. I see he's got a couple of the Punisher frames. Kev's got a couple of the Punisher frames. Uh, really cool little frames, you know, for being PLA and all. And uh, PETG may even be even stronger, and ABS definitely will be stronger. So. It's fun, build stuff. Yes, Chuck also uh, is running my prints. Chuck set me up with a roll red, and um, I literally printed him a boatload of stuff for that. And he'll, he'll let you know that was well worth it, I do believe. <laughs> and uh, it made me feel good when um, they he, he got them, and then Josh Ketchum also said that the prints were on point uh, as far as no cleanup, no nothing. Because as you can see, I make them, I clean them pretty well. So when you get it, it's pretty much a pull at the box, bolt on type deal. And that's basically what you want. And as you can see, I mean, you can see the glare and all. It's just beautiful. Not to toot my own horn. I was really shocked when I got into this and was able to nail it down the way I have. Because a lot of people do go through a lot of funny things with TPU.
Yes, uh, DJI accessories for the Spark. I printed um, Bob and uh, like I said, it's fun to print things like that. I think that's what's cool about. Uh, I've done so many prints, I've forgotten. <laughs> I probably, when I first got into printing, while I was telling Night Train Mike, I literally printed, I'd say I probably printed about five spools of filament and just more or less give it away. To, you know, just not not to basically get a name and make money on this because I really don't. If, you, if you're interested in it, I'm willing to do some trading or something. You got something laying around, you might have something laying around I want, something you might find that you don't need or something like that. And if not, I mean, you're talking like uh, 10 bucks ship, and that's like $7 to ship it because we'll ship it in a priority box. So you're literally talking like 3 bucks for the filament and then whatever electricity I'll choose. So I think that's well beyond fair. Yes, I did, but uh, Crystal is getting them to you tomorrow. I did, but there's a Hawkeye mount. Uh, I think it was a 30 degree mount. What else was it? For a GoPro. Uh, here we are. So these are. So these are for a TBS Source 1 frame, the corner bumpers. These work well. If you have the TBS Source 1 frame, I'm not trying to get a selling point here, but I can give you a story of why I would recommend these for that Source 1. So they're for Lewis. Um, this here was, Lewis should have to help me out with the mount for what camera this was. I'm wanting to say a fire... Fly 7. Look at that red, guys. You see, it looks kind of orange. looks like it's on fire. That's real right there. I mean, that is... Um, in real eyes, it's like blood red. It's a beautiful red. Chuck, <laughs> the red was on point, man. Because when I got it, you know, I sent Chuck a couple different reds, and he that's the one he wanted, like a blood red. So, right on the money. This here is a mount. Okay, so this will mount to, think of the way the session mounts. And this will mount to the I can't remember exactly what we what we got this for. I think it's his LHI frame, the 220. And then so what happens is if you set this, let me get a frame and show you. A what? A PP. A PP? Yeah, the video? A PP? Sure. I thought he might even suggest that, but <laughs> So this guy here, Eric, what's up? So if you see, you put your camera on, it's going to sit straight like that. Well, you want some kind of a tilt because when you fly these, you fly the angle. So what this guy will do, where I said that, I'm unorganized here. Bear with me. So what this guy will do is this guy will bolt here. Like I said, it's for the LHI frame. This is the Martian too. you see. It's actually what the prints are being printed for. You guys might recognize this. E-drones, old baby. But anyway, so that goes there. And then this will set like this. I might have it backwards. No, we're good. Okay. So this is going to set on like that. And then once the camera's in there, I think will strap in. It gives him like a 30 degree pitch for the camera. So pretty cool. And last but not least, the Hawkeye Firefly camera, I think. So this is the mount for the Hawkeye Firefly. Also do those. They're real squishy. Um, I have been told these take out most of the vibration versus the stock mount. Like I said, not a selling point, just stuff I'm being told about this. Everyone can vouch for that that has those. So, yeah, it's fun uh, printing. Chuck, um, I will try to come on the gangbang, but it's kind of hard when Crystal is live. Kind of pulls off the internet to people being live. I'll try to. I know the weather sucks right now, don't it? Eric, you see I'm riding that floss now? Man, this thing is beautiful. Got the Uma grip on it. 
Now, now, okay, guys. Now, okay. Prime example. This is shit. Okay. This was when my printer was out. So, do you see that? That's what I. That's what I call shit. And it's my own work, so I'm allowed to talk about it like that. It looked like a dog. Kind of chewed it up. You see how shitty that is. I'm just trying to get it blank. I don't want to hit the printer and mess everything up. See it all up in there. Ugh. But the one thing that matters is the session goes in there and it still works. And my footage that I put up earlier, my recent video is with this mount. And you can see it holds it perfect and gives perfect footage. So I will reprint that because that's not me. I don't want people looking at it and go, damn, man, what you do? Take a 3D printing pen and make that? Because that's almost what it looks like. <laughs> But that's just my preferences. Um, I still use it because, like I said, the bird, the birds or the clouds don't complain. Um, on my, the one I was just showing, they are HQs. I'm going to need glasses to read these numbers. <laughs> it's being 46. These are HQ 5x4.3x3. HQs. I kind of run HQ. It's kind of the prop I kind of like. You see that on a lot of my birds. I run HQs or DAOs. Um, I bought a bunch of dowels. I think I should have bought a bunch of HQs. I was kind of in the middle of where I want. And Chad knows them motors and AOK fly motors. Man, you're right on point with them motors, Chad. Beautiful. Tom is. Curtis, what's up, brother? Guys, you don't know. Thomas in the house. This is my 3D print pen mentor. Okay, so any kind of like issues I will run into, he's always right there for me. He'll tell you I'm hard headed. I figure stuff out on my own. When the TTU, he's like, ah, right, we'll get together, we'll do it. I'm literally like, I literally figure it all out. But I like to do that. I like to learn on my own. And no disrespect, you know. Thomas runs, I think, three machines at one time. I think he's got, yeah, I know he's got three. He may have more now. <laughs> as long as he don't go around and try to help that one dude that tries to screw everybody, we'll be good. <laughs> oh, yeah, 50-42 wind dancers. I know what you're talking about there. Yes, sir. Uh, these are the wind dancers and I have a uh, my frog has blue ones on it digging those crops up wind dancers And not too many seen this rig so far. So this is one. Um, this is my Josh with Rubble build. So I've always wanted a build from Josh, and he had this for sale. So was, we had the money, so I went ahead and grabbed it from him. Really, really like it. Those. If you guys have never put a five prop uh, on your quad, give it a shot. This thing is a man beast. I tell you, it's just. The throttle and all, it just sounds so different versus the triple props. This is a, a Space One Meteor. You see here the red print on there, same thing, okay? I found holes to mount in the front, just mount them two down. Zip tie with two-way tape in the back. Perfect. Zip ties, hot glue, two-way tape, all that kind of stuff you have to have in your uh, arsenal for flying, I do believe. <laughs> 
yes, 3D printing is slow. This is on uh, 20 on the print speed. So this does take a little bit longer. We're looking at about an hour and 31 minutes on a print. So that's why I said people don't understand. And that's why I like to show this from time to time. Like I said, more or less, I felt like I pushed into doing this one here because a lot of people don't like to watch this. But if you guys like watching this and like seeing this, like I said, you, I have no problem doing more of them. But so you get to see the work that's involved with it. I mean, not nowhere. It's just electricity. I keep the machine up the par. Thomas will tell you that. Um, if you want that kind of results, it takes a little bit of dialing in to get that. And it's not really hard. I mean, honestly, it's something that you have to put a little bit of time, effort into. Uh, other than that, you know, I've been blessed, I think, for 3D printing. I have to honestly say that. Because for my knowledge and all that, I did do an M4 class for 3D printing. But to be honest with you, they taught me absolutely nothing. They taught me the aspect of a printer and kind of, I guess I say nothing, but just basically what a printer is. For me to put my eyes on it and go, oh, wow, that's how it works. But other than that, I pretty much dialed, jumped right into it and dialed it all in myself. Um, Thomas has helped me along with a couple of settings that he just, like, I would re recommend trying doing this once, and I've done it. It literally like made it much smoother. But my, all my prints are pretty much on point. Like I don't, I don't like print, print much that's ugly. I think it's just like a pet peeve. Here's a. Uh, session mount that I did for the little handheld stick job and I printed a cap one for a session I gotta get or it's not session but run cam three I get it down there going and this is kind of okay to me like I don't like the way it's kind of a little ragged around the corner there but I'll accept it I guess other than that it works okay but I printed one kind of like this has tab that holds it in and the kind of the tab that, and it's all depends on how you lay it down too like this here most people would print this probably standing up like this and then they would put uh structures all in here supports but then you have to get all that junk out and it's not worth it and i know there's different methods of doing that making it easier but i just flip it around flip it around so i find like a spot i'm like okay that'll work perfect and as you can see it does it literally there's hardly any kind of scraggle on the legs and all you kind of see how they're uniform both sides like this one has just a little bit of imperfection versus the other side but versus all the supports I'll, i can deal with that you're never even going to really notice that until i just showed it to you <laughs> thomas would look at it and pick 10 reasons out why but he, like I said earlier, he's the print nerd to me. He, he's got his printing stuff on point. He runs all of his printers off of like a uh, Raspberry Pi type thing off of Wi-Fi and all. He's way to the future versus me. He can set down to his own prints, just draw anything up, throw it on the printer. He's the boss. Thomas, I actually this uh, colorful stuff here. Check this out, the um, TPU two colors. That's some wicked stuff right there. Which, when I was at that M4 group, we had a, uh, they had one that would do it. It had four colors. PLA, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it went TPU. Ain't that cool, Thomas? We were talking about that that one day, remember? And I, I remember uh, Ryan had that one. I got that one. Let me grab my chrome frame. I'll put the other one on there. That's some pretty cool stuff right there. Wind dances. <laughs> That's my frog build. If you guys are interested in this frog, um, I built mine and I built one for Drone Man. Um, I built these at a real nice price. You got Facebook, check me out, MD Custom Built Drones. If not, Jim, if he's in here, Jim can get with you. John, RC Phone. 
This is Drone, uh, drone Man Productions, Joe's build. He's going to come down and personally pick it up himself. The only downfall in this is the antenna. It's a left hand, so I change that out, get him a decent antenna before he accepts it. And uh, I start to put the antennas on, so I got you see the antennas run down there. That's not how I do. I run out here on the arms, zip tie over, and then put them out like this. So I'm going to run the receivers up here. I got some six millimeter longer ones, so I'm going to run them all the way out. That way they come down here, and we don't get them up in the front. I'm going to try every aspect of someone being new not to – you know, try a little different, not try, but just every little thing I knew would help. I know when I started out, I put my antennas off the L, I put them off the back, and I'd chew them up into props. And <laughs> so I found that way to work. And when you throttle up, it'll push down on your antenna to lift it into the prop. Kind of this setup here. I do this on all my drones. So as, you, as the wind, you know, from the props are pushing, it's going to push down on that. Instead of dragging it up in the prop. Ryan, what's up? RDF TV. RDF TV. Actually, give this to Jake's Exotic Creations. This is the Floss Toothpick. Three inch build. Nice little drone. There's Ryan's baby. I just built him. This is the Acrobrat. 163 millimeter, three inch. Really nice frame. Really digging that frame. Oh my God. Uh, from Rotorite. He literally did this frame. This is not the Rotorite frame, I don't believe. This is just the clone, more or less. Uh, $27 frame versus, I'm not sure what the Rotorite one's running. But down the specs on it. Like I watched the video and all that. It's like right on with it. So amazing, super smooth flyer. I also build these also at a real reasonable good price. Who? I'm wicking. No, this isn't for sale. This is uh, for Jake's Exotic Creations. He's literally just getting in the drone. But I could put a build sheet together for you on this and let you know if you're interested. This has got Hobby Pro Motors. This has got a Mamba, or a, uh, not a Mamba, HGL, HGLRC 405 stack. The only thing I don't like about it. Fox here, Predator camera it's got an axi stubby fpv antenna um i run the mambo yeah let me know rc fun said ryan said send it to me i'll send you my address and sky pilot said hi okay ryan so you're saying give your acro brat to rc funds no problem <laughs> <laughs> right oh hell no i like to use the mamba um Stack diatone. This thing, I'm gonna tell you, is amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The only downfall is if you guys can see these tiny little solder joints across there, they have screwed a couple people over. John, RC Funds, and Baduga. Because if you put apply too much heat to them, they literally wipe themselves right off the board. They're so tiny. But that stack right there uh, runs forty dollars, and that is. A real nice stack like I've used it in just about five builds now and like I said a couple of people have gotten it they love the stack it was purely their fault they totally admit that I think John was using like a big screwdriver so <laughs> I'm kidding his tip his tip was messed up so who did all right Thomas be good man Appreciate you stopping by. You run that same stat exactly, so you know all about that mamba. <laughs> Ryan, no, you did not say that. Okay. Oh, you try, John. I gotta give it to you. But yeah, the HG, the HGLRC 405 stack. Um, a couple of people run it. Night Train is actually mm -hmm. one of them here. It runs it. Uh, I can't say it's. 
HGLRC's fault, but then they did have like problems with that ESC running issue. Um, I've flown six flights with it, and it literally it just crapped itself out. So after paying like I think it was roughly eighty five ninety dollars for that stack, that kind of got punched me in the ball. So I kind of went off the beaten path and found something that was you know something that's gonna work, and that mom I just can't get over it. And when I do my frog builds, I, I will use the 30 by 30 Mamba stack, which you can run uh, three to six S with that stack. So now that's dependent on KVs and all, you know, as far as anybody running six S with your motor, different motor setup on a six S setup. So, but just capable of running that, you know. Really nice stacks, though. I can't get over them. Them, I like them. And I honestly like the uh, Emax Magnum stacks. I do believe they're pretty much there. That's pretty much the ones I've messed with so far. But real happy with results on those. He said, I got a new iron. I'm get a new mama soon. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, I found, John, what I do with them little boards is I go by, I'll go down the line of those, those little tiny ones I showed you, and I'll tin every one of them. Bang, 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 bang. And if you have any that, like, it drops solder off on the other one. Don't sweat that. Just keep moving along. Let that go ahead and just cool itself down. And no problem, right? So then keep moving along. And then as you're done, just go back and kind of drag. So if you're like dot, 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 you know, you get like maybe three of these here with the solder blob. No big deal. Go back, make sure your soldering iron's real hot and just start like this and like lay the tip down like this and just go like this. It'll literally drag, it'll drag that solder off and everyone will be clean for you. And don't bear down on it. Be real, like, real easy with it. So I found that I go and tin them, and then I let them cool down, and then I'll start soldering the wires on later, you know, give them a cool down period. Because that little pads are, you're talking like, um, if you ever open up our Hershey Kiss, probably thinner than that, the paper, you know, the little solder pad onto it. So you imagine what heat does with that. Cool. Good results. That's like me on most of my flight controllers. Um, I run F3, um, SP Racing F3 flight controller. You guys see, I can tune them and everything. They're, they, I mean, they're perfect. A lot of people go off, you know, on different things. Don't want to use F3, but I still think they're awesome. Uh, I kind of thought in the beginning I was on the wrong path, but then I realized it was that I was I wasn't running D shot on the ESCs. I was running one shot. And that's when you guys know in one shot, you can't do turtle mode and all that good stuff. But when you go from one shot to D shot, I noticed the difference on that also. Just a slight bit of a difference, not much. Switch analog versus digital. He's in no way, it's mine on <laughs> Ryan said he can't wait to rip that thing. Yeah, it runs 8K great, exactly. That's why I like it. It's really good. Um, Lewis Paduga RCs, he put um so this this trans tech frog frame 218 millimeter is a 30 by 30 stack. He put that mom with 20 by 20 in here, man. It was running it and it was amazing machine. It was literally performing. And that's what a lot of people don't know. When these guys build like these serious rigs and stuff, like they build like the, you know, low profiles and stuff like that. They're that's what they're doing too. They're using like twenty by twenties and just breaking the stacks down. I thought that was pretty cool. Put like your ESC in the middle, like troll in the back or something, or vice versa, to get that drop deck real low. One K, yeah. A lot of people do that. Um, what if, actually, uh. Plug something in today, I think. Or no, actually, um, I think it's the that reverb uh, that Ryan did Russell on um, when I set switches on it. That's what that's running. It's smooth. I know in F3s, if you take the F3s and put say 8K 4K on it, or uh, 8K 8K, it ain't even gonna arm. <laughs> I've learned that. I change that up, see people say, yeah, 8K, 8K, right? Not realizing that, you know, certain boards or whatnot, and pin looping and all that. And then literally, I like to turn around and set it on there and try to arm it, walk all the way to the field, arm it. Nope. 
I run Kiss, Zilly. We know you run Kiss. <laughs> I tell you what, Chuck, Josh has got him dialed in, man. I've flown his whip bro uh, Sunday or Saturday. Ooh. He's got those filters figured out. I promise you that. That thing is smooth. I'm going to build a kiss rig one of these days. Just to run it. Just to, I'm gonna just do it to make Chucky happy. <laughs> now, I like to see different things. I ran CC3D for a little bit. Well, flown it once, maybe. Got to be honest. Kiss just dropped on the price. See, by the time I get there, Kiss will be cheap as hell. Because you know that big flyer dude, chuck it, he'll be already moved through it and he won't even be praising it no more. So prices will go way down. <laughs> you two FC only 55 now. Nice. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little leery about building one because I seen I did see a lot of people stick a lot of money into those and then have issues. I don't know if that was builder issues or manufacturing issues. She about had a heart attack, Chuck, when you said, well, you buy them B1 ESCs, I'll give you the flight controller. She looked there, like, she said, they're 25 bucks a piece. That's one you buy here this week, buy the other one next week, maybe a couple weeks later, buy another one. So 615, we're at 59, get ready to pop on 60%. I think we're good on time. The wacky thing. <laughs> Bob the Builder, yes, we can. What goggles everybody flying with? Fat Shark Dominator V3s. The Furious, the True D Furious models. And then Night Train got what? Uh, oh shit, you told me the other day. I saw them. The ones that Ryan had for sale. Attitude, right? Steel I know Ryan uses a uh, fat shark HD threes. I know Chuck's got HDO. I want to get different um antennas. Like I see people flying with the fat sharks, they have that big huge patches coming off their head. I kind of thought they were kind of insane at one point, but I can see it now. <laughs> Cause you're the uh, this little one. I got the uh, BAS antennas. Uh, this is all set up, like I said, uh, from Ryan. Um, but I like this antenna, but I'd like it to be taller. So I guess I get an extension to put on there, just get another antenna. I think like be like a little bit taller than what it is. Get up past my big head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked wants to know what the MV95 PSI stands for. Wicked, that is I don't have my picture here no more. I used to have a um I used to be in the cars and I had a 95, 1995 uh, Eagle Talon. 
It's like the Mitsubishi Eclipse, but it's the Eagle version of it, Canadian version of the Mitsubishi Eclipse. So it was a 1995 Eagle Talon TSI, Turbo Sport Intercooling TSI, I mean, and uh, so I used the 95 year of the car and MD live in Maryland and TSI Turbo Sport Intercooling. Yeah, and they all, and they all, so Ed and, um, actually any Marky, um, any shit has give me that name from day one, uh, M the MD, they call me Mad Dog, so it kind of fits, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and Jake will tell you, my car was freaking a turd. <laughs> Jake, remember that night that I turned that manifold as red as this freaking print right here. <laughs> but yeah, me and Jake, dude, we used to be in the cars like these type. He's in the Volkswagen type things, and man, he took a little red. I think it was golf one of Jake. He put crazy money under the hood of that thing. I always try to get him to race me. He wouldn't race me. Then he goes and gets a freaking jalapeno that literally he had a Volkswagen, guys. I guarantee you. I don't give a shit who had what you thought they had. They had nothing compared to this little monster. This thing would go down the highway, third gear, and just blow the tires off of it. Just mess just on whatever he went up against. Then he got his, what, WRX? You said, I know nothing about his WRX, but, dude, yeah. <laughs> he had a pine needles catch fire. That's some funny shit. My my manifold was so hot I could have jabbed a screwdriver through that thing. That thing. That's how hot I ran at things. Balls to the wall, nothing less. That car runs around Pasadena, Maryland now. Actually, it's taken off the uh, plane or the, the palm trees. <laughs> Oh, really? Take off those ninety degree and you get better reception? Okay. <laughs> Oh, what? O3 D35? Yeah, yeah. Room workshop. Woo! No joke. My talent, dude, I just think was crazy. I don't know why that thing was what it was, but I bought some just odds and ends and bolted on that thing. But I tell you, that thing was mean for what it was. I'm surprised I've never blown the thing up, to be honest with you. But I, man, these guys with them Mustangs and all, they had nothing with that little light car. That little light car, dude, would just leave the freaking line so fast. You're talking Jakey's language now, Jim. <laughs> You're all right, man. I told him, don't. I told him, man, don't take you serious on everything. That you're just, you know, you're, you're just that guy, you know. I say he likes to bust ball, just, you know. He, Joe, is just gets wound up over certain things. And I, I kind of told him that, you know, I, I don't like the fact of someone. I mean, I appreciate him, you know, but I built him a drone, and that's just, I didn't do nothing special that no one else couldn't do, to be honest with you. But, yeah, he was a little upset, but it's, he's all good now. He said he appreciated your email that you sent him and all that and whatnot. Really? Okay, uh, Wiccan, I appreciate that. Good info there, brother. So then I see where the antennas, so my antennas would screw straight on at that point. So how, so that doesn't matter at all? Just, you don't have to angle the antennas up? Because I definitely look at the ground, my black. Never knew that. That's a 90 for the reception now, huh? Learn something new every day. Now, 
than the rubber band. Like that, bro. Just bend it up. Wow, really? Hey, Chuck, why didn't you ever tell me this? <laughs> He's going to be like, I tried to tell you, dumbass. I know Chuck don't want me to see better. That's all right. That's all right. I understand, Chuck. Oh, boy. Don't see that? Oh, yeah, especially the patch going to be hard to put on without the angle. I want to go on without the angle. So I have to use one for the patch. Because I don't believe it. <laughs> this guy. I have to have one on the patch there, uh, Mark. Because I can't get it on. <laughs> can't get it in. Personal problem. Hey, I give it a shot. Shit. Okay, cool beans. I'll definitely give it a run. Of course, my big head's really going to block it now. Yeah, you go, you go, freaking mile offshore with that thing. You're a better man than I am. I promise you that. You better hope that damn lady is pull you butt back to shore. Now I say that, and I'm not being meaning being a dick. I just don't, I don't play with the water like that. The water to me, water and flying in an airplane. So if something happens, you just can't get out and walk. You know, go find yourself some help, climb underneath your car, perhaps, and fix what's needed. <laughs> you have to stand there 20 minutes looking up Shaw alligator attacks again. <laughs> Guys don't know I'm talking about Dan uh, drone workshop. So he's got that failing uh, FP-12 uh, badass little boat. He went out one day and something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened. He, he literally had to get, uh, I was going to say shark infested water. Uh, alligator infested waters didn't get that thing. <laughs> yeah, Ed, I, that's true, but that dang water can turn on your ass quickly. You can blink your eye and the water gets rough like so quick. Plummet, what's up? Adam in the house. Got your wig in your hand. Okay. That makes sense because you guys definitely do your tests with that. Richard, same way. Richard Coggin, big wing guy. Uh, he does the same thing. He tests the antennas. Man, he talks to you. He just listens to him for days talking about the different uh, frequencies and all that good stuff. I'll definitely give it a shot, and no doubt. All right, Jim. Be good. Try to, anyway. Take a drone, man. Let's see you dive to church or something. <laughs> Giving your boat away. There you go, Dan. Yeah, right. Now the eight foot gator right on your feet. Was your boat cut down, Dan? It looks like they might have cut it down before. Like I've seen people do boats around here. 
and they'll chop the front off like that. Then, you know, instead of being all the way out to the V, it makes it super long to haul around. Damn, five inches of snow. Green Frog, what's up? How you doing? No, it's just okay, ten foot down, but I think. Of course if you're a water man, I understand. It doesn't matter what uh what it takes to get out there on that water. Freaking tie some logs and string together at that point. I understand that if it's your passion. <laughs> but you wouldn't catch MD out in that boat. You'd be like, Come on, bro, we're gonna go out on them. I'm like, nah man, I'm good. <laughs> you gotta have like a uh Yacht, like a 10 man crew. Sure, me if I go over. I had an opportunity to go. Um, how many miles was it off Ocean City for that tuna? How many miles off Ocean City with John that time to go on that tuna boat? Remember, you wanted me to drone the uh, dolphins or the whales? I mean, it was like so many miles out, like I didn't even do it, dude. I'm like, no. Like three miles, or no? Yeah, it was like eighty. It was either eighty or hundred and twenty miles off Ocean City. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm thinking, nah, uh, I know a mile. You can't look back and see land. Nautical miles, baby, not regular miles. One point six compared to yeah, one point six. Yeah, right. Point six added to his head on a rope. No. But he wanted me to do it, and I had the three D R solo, and we all know rock and roll ain't gonna work. He's like, dude, if your drone goes in the water, I got freaking deck hands to be right in that water and get that drone to whatever touch the bottom. I'm like, that's okay. I might go in the water. I can swim too. And float, of course. Six years old, got his first boat. Nice. All right, Adam. Go boat, big thing. There you go. Yeah, I know. They're getting sick of them up there. Bob did a video for him. Oh, God. Snow everywhere. So we're at 73% now. I'm not too bad. Moving right along. This print takes roughly an hour and 31 minutes, I believe. So I did three of them. But Kev's worth it. We do some horse trading, and uh, actually, is this the one from Kev? Yeah. No, this is the one with Ryan sent Russell. Um, but I got my first session from Kev, first horse trading. So I just had some printing. I had PDTV on, so I was printing that for a while. I got to get another printer and run uh, TP on one and PLA, or probably just PEPG on another. So there comes a time where you can't always run soft mounts. On things. Awesome, Mark. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, I tried to everything I print. I tried to get it down. We're actually one day we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna print some propellers. We're gonna balance them all out. We're gonna just uh, me and Josh, we're gonna go out there and literally just see what they do. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting, right, Mike? We can. Three or four printers. I know I could. And to be honest, I'd probably go right back with the A and A. I'd probably get one identical to this. And even if it didn't have the firmware, I'd flash this one onto it and go right with the same setup. Because other than I can change, so this is running, like I said, the TPU right now. I can change over to PLA or PETG in about six minutes. That's putting it all in, you know, literally having to take the TPU out of the extruder and then put it in um, another one, another roll, which this is the roll, if you guys don't know. This is what they look like. So this is PLA. This is kind of harder stuff. As you can see, the difference, the texturity to it. And then this here, 
this is what I'm printing here. Let me find the answer. Let's pull up on me. So this is red TPU. You see the wheel is just about spent. Still a lot on there though. And that's what this is. This is just a freaking spaghetti noodle. Printing this stuff is, like I said, it takes a little bit of skills. Just like a spaghetti noodle. Think of way, same way you make spaghetti, red noodles. Oh, the uh, angel hair noodle. <laughs> Not bad neither. Roll cost you about. Man. PLA, about 25 bucks. TPU, anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks, depending on your color. Um, now. Mark, I don't, uh, I will put it out there, though, if someone, um, finds someone that may have one that want to trade for it, that needs a set of goggles. So you got the 800D, so there are, you got the diversity ones with the DVRs and all. It's definitely a good trade. Yep, that red roll cost me nothing. Chuck it, bought that red roll, and I literally printed him some prints for it, and that's what it cost me. So, uh, time basically. And like I said, I'll do that for anybody. If you have something that you you want printed, um, basically, if I don't have the color, um. And well, obviously, if you want just a mount or something, they're not going to get you to buy a roll for a mount. But I'll, you know, I'll get that Keller as soon as possible and get that mount made for you. But if people are committed, I'd have no problem buying the Kellers and getting it out there. Now, watch when it goes across here. You see right here, there's nothing there, right? Okay, it's all open. It will just form right across there and dry it as fast as it puts it out there. Watch it when it goes across. It's pretty wild how it will pretty, pretty much print across an open space like that. It's 78, so it's got a little bit more uh, where you can see. You lay that on its side. Chalk said green. Chalk, that sounds good. Green, I'm down with that. And you see it took a little fiber across there already. There's actually a little fine line across there already. Watch it'll come back across. Pretty cool. I've sat here and watched it print something literally like a six inch gap and it literally fits right across it. Pretty amazing. Because it'll move so quick and just drop out a little tiny uh, line for it to grab. But you can see how much more it has to come up from here to here. And when I do the prints, I can go into the uh, slicing program and I can do a three uh, x ray. I can scan it all the way down and then drag my my pointer up and it'll just build it show me on the build plate how it's going to build now it all works out if you see this this just a little drop right here because that should be a support that goes from here to here but i print without support i give it a chance to try to do it on its own and it does look kind of janky a little bit but that's when like i said you get just that little bit of imperfection right there like I said, you can barely tell once it's finished so it's doable let me see something here. So that's why I said my eyes. So you see how like I see something right there, like two little dark spots. It's smooth across there, it's just two little spots. Huh. You see they all got it. So see certain people like Thomas that was in here, Thomas would figure out what's causing that and get that out. That would bother certain people, but not me. It does the job. And Kev, like I said, um, me and Kev, we did some horse trading, so this is costing Kev nothing. Uh, it's just something I owe Kev. I just had printing other things and just wasn't back on the TPU yet. So, 
but he's a brother. He takes care of me, take care of him, and that's kind of how we work here. Help each other out, and money's not an issue. <laughs> Mike. And Mike, if they don't, oh, I kick the camera again, Vicky. If y'all have no screws, <laughs> you always get this side. <laughs> and not cameras are expensive enough, right? <laughs> yeah, them freaking ones are like this, right? <laughs> well, shit, we got plenty of foundation for them. Wait a minute, we could probably put like six across there. I'm thinking I know what we do. Won't go nowhere now, will it? Put you like six straps on it. You see how it's built? Up the cross there, it's built that line up. Let me talking to y'all. I got your mind off that, but you can see it right there. It's done. It's done. Took two line, two layers across there already. Pretty crazy. And the crazy part about that, like you said, Mike, is you literally sent them one. That's sad. That goes to show you. Like I said, some people you just can't help. Some people think they have a different mindset. And uh, I tell you what, even what I'm what I'm doing here, you could still go, hey, uh, let me sh let me share something with you. And I'd stop and listen to what you have to say, and because you can always still learn. Never ever stop learning. And actually, I think that's just a dirty and dirty extruder, to be honest with you. I think the tip on the extruder is just a little dirty because I'm seeing it here just a little bit, the little faint black dot. Will the bolt. Our poor Amazon lady, or UPS uh, lady, is freezing to death, but they picked them up. Okay. She was out there on the deck shaking. Long. Yeah. She always comes in. They send her out when they mess up. Other than that, the guy them. She's like, oh, I think it matters where they're going. I said, yeah. She said, they're both going to the same place. I said, yeah, but one's defective and one's not. So they got to go in the right envelopes. That was those ESCs I bought, guys. Uh, two. Uh, about 20 amber back when I was moving it real bad and I paid like $22 a piece for 420 amps so it wasn't bad but they literally had them wired marked wrong on the things so they wire them they start smoking as soon as you plug it in to the point where the pack will get hit, get hot so yeah Kaz hey lady sorry I didn't get to call Kaz. you hey welcome how's Mars doing Um, Ed, I do have them. Um, I have actually Neil's. Uh, let me grab that. So I did this for Neil. This is for the, uh, or I keep saying session. This is for the Run Cam 3 S. This is gonna be thinking as I'm talking. Uh, but I did, I did that. I did a um, took the GoPro five, put it on the uh, time lapse. Doesn't like thirty, I think it's like thirty some seconds. Freaking crazy. <laughs> but yeah, time lapse and like a print like this for like roughly an hour. Yeah, it'd be cool. But yeah, like I said, make them prints no matter what you need. I actually have, 
I do believe if I can't get it on Thingiverse, I have people that I could reach out with literally make it if I had a rough design of it. Mars, there he is. What's up? Oh, what? They gave you a low. They do that shit over there. They do the same shit here. I saw it. Gotta get a ticket. Gotta raise it up. That's crazy. You see a new green machine in the house? <laughs> it's another green machine. So what do you got to do now? Go get your car and then, so they impounded it. So what you have to do, get it out of impound and then go do a, uh, what they call a, what did they call it? I'm have a work order. That's what they get me around here on uh, work orders. I come up behind a cop car one night. My headlights was under his car. I'm behind a stop sign. He pulls off, goes down around the corner, pulls over in a parking lot, turns his lights off as soon as I go past. You already know what happened. He walks up to my car, my my window, my driver window is at his kneecaps. It was on the ground. Call to RWC, okay. So now you gotta go put your stock suspension on roughly and then just get it inspected. Now, are you capable of putting it back down lowered or are you gonna have hell of a penalty penalties if you get caught again? Because that's what they'll do here. You, you can have so many work orders, but after so many, they will do it. So more or less take the car and then you, you have to, so do you have to do like a shop to have the work done or can like Mars do the work or? That's terrible. I thought Aussie was fun, not now. Can't lower your car when I'm taking your car, damn. But I gotta ask, was speeding involved with any of that? <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought she said they take the car. I'm sorry. I missed they don't. Okay. Yeah. So like around here, they give you just a ticket and a fine or whatever, and you have to just go take care of it. Oh, okay. So you can still lower it. Oh, okay. So you just have this. That's cool. Mm. I got gotcha. you. So you know, you know what you need. You need them adjustable coolovers, or they do, do they allow you for that? Or do you have to have go back to the factory, get those coolovers? You just take jacket up, let spring drop down a little bit, crank the uh, trunnion down. <laughs> I tried that. I'm just asking. They said, uh, I don't think so, buddy. That's still altered suspension. <laughs> no, it's adjustable. Yeah, Mike B, what's up? Well, damn, Kaz, that sucks. The car was beautiful. I'm sure it'll still look nice, lower it down a little bit. You might. So what you do is you do like they do right here. They have to raise them up a little bit. They'll add just a little taller profile of a tire, and it still it still looks perfect. But yeah, playing with them, playing with the police is definitely not a fun situation. I used to do it a lot. Sweet Mars, exactly what you need in a situation like that. Someone to just go, well, see, and we have people over here that just write it off. And now they make you have to go to like a state police barracks or so, something like that, or inspection station. And they literally look at your in the suspension and make sure it's 100%. Because when they hit you here, they want you back to stock. They don't give you no, well, you can just do 100 mil. They want it back to stock. So whatever it was stock, that's what they make you put it there. 
Yeah. Harrison, if I can push a button while I order it. Yep. Big bucks it is. Air ride. Airbags. Ooh. I actually have uh, two, um, I think they're Firestone or Bridgestone bags in my garage. Brain thinking that. Jake's down here. He knows what they're from. He was building a low rider all here. 50 or can't remember the year pickup of it. What year it was? The old pickup. Nice thing though, too. Or Hyde Rose Mars. They're cheaper, but they're messy of a line break. I see Kaz now and them lights light her up in the back window. Push, 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 push. <laughs> and no switches. She'll mess up, push the wrong one, and drop the ass on the ground and three wheel it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Got away with it for four years. Well, you can't beat that. Then. They're on your ass around here. As soon as you do it, you'll get away in four days with that shit. And especially if you don't do the work yourself and you have to pay someone to do it, that really is a ball buster. Get all that work done. Like tinted windows are sick for that around here. As you see, that's right. Oh, man. And the only reason why I say that is the mace incident. I always think about that and sit here and laugh my ass off about that. Me and Crystal were sitting here one day and I said that. But <laughs> it was something you'd said something. And I said, well, as long as they don't have no freaking the police show up with no mace, I think everything will be okay. <laughs> and he, what's up, Cardoso? Be like 80 with the sunshine out of Bear Candy. Good shit, I wish. Okay, cool. So you don't have to have a spec that's sporty. Ninety five percent. Right on time to six fifty one to probably about seven. Get my butt off here and go cook me some dinner and then Chris will be ready to go to wacky. Wednesday. <laughs> I know it's weird I'm on all Wednesday. Night train got me to do this. <laughs> that damn mic. <laughs> damn, mine is 51. Oh, woo. Good. They make one get go touch the heat. Just couldn't say that. Man. No, Kenny, um, I didn't do Monday night. Um, my mom's birthday was Monday, so with her not here, it kind of sucks. I kind of got myself in like a rut. I'm not trying to put no pity party on no one. Just me, myself, I got a little rut and just didn't really feel it. <laughs> Mike said I already had one. Hey, Mike, that shit don't count. I already had one on there, too. <laughs> Nah, just something I wanted to do. I'll be on uh, this Monday for sure, though. Yeah, so, Bill, I was in um the Drone Network chat last night. We have a uh, Facebook where we get in there and all. We chat back and forth. If you guys want in, it's no problem. We'll put anyone in there. Uh, we... Uh, so we were in there and I was calling um Wiccan, which is Mark. I was calling him Bill. I was like, no, he said his name was Bill the other night. And I got to thinking today about that. I was like, I remember who Bill was now. That was Metro. <laughs> but I'll call um Alvin Adam. So 
I mix names up every now and again. I'm pretty sure he was Bill, though, but. And are you out still delivering in that weather, Kenny, like that? I'm sure it's just like an average day for you guys, right? Because we just had the uh, Brown come here and pick up two little packages, and uh, she was a blonde. I'm not sure if you're that sexy, but <laughs> I'm kidding. But, yeah, dude, imagine that's crazy out there. I know you ain't driving with your side doors open. Do you guys have those uh, – like same brown UPS truck that we have here with the freaking they rob the doors open all the time. I imagine up there you need like a freaking Mercedes um the SUVs with the good heat on it. Oh yeah, tomorrow would it be minus forty? <laughs> Ain't that something just a little different? You call it a warm up. Shoot. Not us. If it's 30 degrees here, it's cold. You guys are polar bears. Ninety-nine percent. They're getting ready to roll off. Look at that. I said that seven. They did it in like three minutes. Look at this. And then it homes it all. So that it all goes home. So it puts everything in the home position when it's done. There it is. And like I said, just a little bit right here. That you can't complain about that. And then you have a little bit of burr here. But all that gets cleaned off, as you can see. Blue and blue didn't do good neither. And to peel it off, I just do like this. I go around, pop off the little the brim part there and just peel it right off. And then that's clean up. So if you see that part there. So that's just part that sticks to your bed, and then you kind of just peel that off. It's kind of a pain in the neck to get off. Well, as you can see right there, as it's real hot, it'll peel right out. So look, that's luck right there. I say that. And the only reason why it's coming off real easy because I said it's hard to get off when I'm on camera. But as you can see, basically just get in there and grab it. And there you have it. So if you kind of get at it while it's still warm, it kind of comes off pretty good. And then that part there had to be trimmed with a blade. Brother than that, there you are, Kev. Three of them. Now will set you good for a little bit, I believe. And again, they were session mounts for the GoPro. So let's see the difference of the Runcam 3S versus the Session. I can't, even, I can't even get it in there. It's way bigger, the Runcam 3S. This is the way it's... Oh, it's going to start recording us. Look at that. Well, I don't know if it's in there. If you had to use this for that, you could, I guess. Just goes to show you how much more different the run cam is versus the session. Not far off. I thought flip, sitting there all flopping around. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. <laughs> Freaking Mike. So should I cut this part off of this? And then we'll just uh, use an alternative mount. <laughs> Mike, don't get me in trouble. Nice. Put your first swoop top sweet. You did one lap the winner did 20 laps. Well, 
I bet you after a few, you'll be right there with them. All you got to fight threes and that sucks, son. Well, all right, guys. That's it. That's the session. That's how it's done. Uh, I'd say anyone can do it, but it's been proven that it can't. Um, <laughs> but there you have it. And there for Kevin TV again, like I said, Kev, I'll go ahead and get these out to you. And we'll get your, he's got those harder ones on his, uh, the PLA. He's got these guys on his. So that'd be a big difference. Your stuff here, you can throw it at somebody and kill them with it versus the TPU. And there's 30 degrees, so. I can't wait till it warms up. When it warms up, I'll be here burning every freaking pack. I got my rig down. I got my tune down. I got everything down. So we got the drone that I pretty much think I'm going to stick with and run with instead of flying all the other ones. And try to put some flow together. This person's literally the most cherry, yeah. Yep. When it warms up, I'll be on it. I once got the day the freaking wind wasn't happening. So. Richard, welcome. Richard Coggins in the house. All right, Ryan. Give me a call later. Got 46 last week. No problem, Metro. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I want to do uh, more uh, like this. I just don't want to bore everybody with the printing. I don't know. Like I said, a lot of a lot of people seem like they enjoy it. Um, I know before I got into it, I used to sit back and watch prints and all. I thought it was pretty cool. Because you watch something start from nothing. I mean, you pretty much go from that to that. I mean, that's pretty crazy. It appears right before your eyes, and you're only... You're talking all coming from this here and turning into that. So that's pretty cool. Here's the mount I did for uh, Cap, uh, Richard, for that 3S run cam. I kind of was looking for something like this, kind of put it on a little selfie stick. Richard Coggins also does 3D printing, guys. He actually, Richard sets down, draws his stuff up through CAD and all that. I believe that's what he uses. A program like that, anyway, if not, and uh, does his own mounts. He did an um, actual mount for the Run Cam 3S for your one mic built you, right, Richard? Chameleon. Yep. I said many of makers around. So the ones that are kind of like kind of trying to make money off of it, you're not going to get nowhere with it, I promise you. We have too many people out here that are makers that love the FPV world. And everyone knows FPV are some cheap asses, right guys? I know I am. <laughs> Steve, what's up? Southpaw Drones, thanks for stopping in. Get ready, and this Steve, I just had doing some 3D printing. Uh, so I printed, uh, went ahead and printed one of these. Um, printed three today, It'd take about an hour and 31 minutes. So I went to get and do, run a print. Uh, basically, just to do it. There's reasoning behind it, but basically just to have fun, hang out, take Crystal's time. No. <laughs> Y'all know I ain't going to be on come wacky Wednesday. She's ready to choke me. But guys, I will catch you on Wacky Wednesday. Don't forget, uh, we got Wacky Wednesday tonight at 8 
p.m. and that goes from whenever eight to eleven, eight to twelve, pretty much. Uh, and we also have the FPV Move to Hump Day. It is actually you can jump on in there. Um, called Gang Bang. You might want to watch doing that with Chuck, but <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, Chuck, I'll try to jump in. Like I said, if it's um, that's why I lagged uh, a couple of times. I jumped in with y'all that one time is because just two of us live streaming at once, like a little too much, I think. But I'll try to jump in for a minute again. But I don't want to mess your stream up. I'm good at doing that. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. Hey, Mars, you too, brother. And uh, keep up with them whoops, man. You'll get there. And keep Kaz straight. Keep her out of, keep her out of trouble with the popos. <laughs> Either at Kaz or you need to put some NOS on that thing and throw a cam in there. Wait, they can't catch you. <laughs> All right, you guys will still be on, Chuck? Sometimes Crystal goes like 11 or 12. I know y'all ain't run no hump day that long. Are you like tonight? Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm not running that late tonight. It's been a long week. We're going to run probably 8 to, I don't know, it might even be 8 to 9.30. Okay. But we're not going late, late. So. Cool beans. I'll jump in there. Yep. Uh, I'll loan him to you, Chuck, for a little bit. Move it on. All right, guys. I appreciate you hanging out. Adam, thank you for stopping by, man. I really appreciate you, brother. Get them pipes, man. Such pipes freezing. I know what that feeling is. They're crawling your trail and all that. Nah. Let them spigots run full blast, which I guess as cold as you are, it doesn't matter, right? Full blast is still probably want to freeze on you. But guys, again, I appreciate you. Appreciate your time hanging out. Night train trying to get me in trouble, but appreciate him. <laughs> Thanks, guys, and we'll catch you at 8 p.m. Right here at the same spot. Not my channel, Crystal, though. So. Don't forget, check them out. Check out Hump Day, please. Over there to the FPV YouTube. Sweet. All right, guys. Catch you later.